In the previous episodes of the series, we looked at 10 bushcraft knife skills and 10 bushcraft axe skills, both of which can be seen by following the links in the video description below. But now it's time to finish the trilogy, with 10 bushcraft skills in roughly 10 minutes. There are a few different types of saw that I use when out in the woods. The saw that I choose to take with me will depend on what tasks I am doing and at what time of year. If I'm building shelters, I tend to take a large folding pull saw. If it's winter camping, then I often use a folding bow saw. But if it's summertime, or if I don't need to be cutting large amounts of wood, then I will use a small folding saw. Each have their benefits and drawbacks. Without further ado, let's learn some new saw skills. The first skill I'm going to cover will involve the Agawa folding bow saw. This is a great saw for use on canoe trips, and the folding design has been really well thought through. There are times when you need to cut short, small diameter pieces of wood, and it can be really tricky to get any form of good grip for the saw blade to bite. But if you have a bow saw, you can lay a small flexible stick over the frame and place your feet on it to pin the saw down. Then you can pinch the top of the saw between your knees to help keep the saw blade straight. Now all you need to do to cut wood fast is to rub the log up and down against the blade and it will cut in no time. This method is totally the opposite of normal sawing as you are moving the wood itself instead of the saw blade. Doing it this way allows you to put much more power into the cut and you can find that it will cut wood faster than doing it the conventional way of moving the saw back and forth. It also means that you can cut much shorter sections of wood that you would not normally be able to do when pushing the saw back and forth. One of the main problems when cutting wood out in the forest is trying to keep the wood still whilst cutting it. If you have a small diameter log or stick that you need to cut, you can tuck them under your leg and pinch them using the back of your knee as a vice. Now you can cut the wood whilst keeping it still, and the saw blade is safely to the side of your body, so that when you finish the cut, there is no risk of the blade following through and hitting your leg. Again, this method works well for small diameter wood, anything that is larger will be difficult to keep locked under your knee, but we will look at a different method for larger logs later in the video. When making notches in wood for lashing two pieces of wood flush together, I would normally use a saw and then a knife. However, if all you have on you is a saw, you can still create a relatively smooth square notch. Using a small folding saw, I make a number of cuts in the wood, all at the same depth. Then, using the saw blade, I make a small twist to prise the cut open and the wood will chip off. I always make sure I am not twisting the saw blade too hard and that I use the thickest part of the blade nearest the hinge as this is where you can produce the most force. Once all of the small pieces of wood have been popped off, you can then clean up the notch by doing a number of pull cuts to clear any protruding pieces and square up the notch. A similar method you could do is to make a small cut near the end of the wood, then twist the blade gently and pop the small first piece off. Then continue with the next cut and do the same, and then the same with the next cut after that, until you get to the required length of your notch. By doing it this way, each piece of wood that you are removing is always on the outside, and therefore has much less resistance when popping it off. Once you've tidied up your notch, you can then place your sticks together and lash both notches together to create a right angle for things like door or window frames. Another notch that I often use in a lot of my shelter builds is a saddle notch. This involves creating a curved notch that allows the log to sit on top of another round log. To make this notch, I use the same small folding saw, but this time I start with a shallow cut on the end, then each cut after that I make slightly deeper, with the deepest notch being in the middle. Once all of the cuts have been made, a quick twist of the saw blade removes the wood pieces and gives me a rough saddle shape. Then it's just a case of doing a number of pull cuts to tidy up the notch as much as possible. It will never be as smooth or tidy as it would be doing it with a bushcraft knife or a chisel, but it will be enough to make the notch sit firmly on another log of a similar diameter. This type of notch is great for rafters in the roof of a shelter. In winter, when conditions are constantly wet, finding dry wood to start fire can be tricky. In this particular conifer forest, the dominant tree species is the Scots pine. You can see that there are plenty of protruding branches on each tree that have been broken off or are simply not able to grow into a full branch because of the lack of light. There is usually a significant amount of resin in these branches where the shoulder of the branch meets the main trunk of the tree. 
Resin can be an excellent natural firelighting resource, and given that these branches are high up in the tree, they are often very dry all year round. But how do you get them down? If you have a small folding saw in your pack, you can lash it to a long stick using an arbor knot. The arbor knot is simple to tie, just make one overhand knot, leaving a small tag end, and then make another overhand knot in front of it, but don't pull it tight. Then pass this around the stick and handle of the saw, and put the working end through the overhand knot. Ratchet down on the knot to pull it tight. Then do the same to the base of the saw handle so that it stays straight and doesn't wobble. Now you have a makeshift extended pole saw to reach those resinous branches. When cutting the branches, it's best not to put any downward pressure on the saw. Just move it back and forth and let the saw do the work. The weight of the stick will help to maintain pressure. You can see clearly from this shot that part of the branch which meets the trunk of the tree has red colouring to it. This is tree resin and it's highly flammable. If you make small shavings from it, it will take a spark from a ferro rod or a lighter really easily. Here is a dead standing pine tree, a great resource for shelter building. This pine tree has been dead a while, it has no canopy and it would never have been able to grow much further due to the other larger trees blocking sunlight from reaching it. This one tree can have multiple uses. If you are in need of a temporary saw vise, you can cut the tree around waist height, then cut a v-notch in it. You can then use this v-notch as a vise to hold long pieces of wood steady when sawing. It's very sturdy because it's still held together by the root system of the tree, even though it's already dead. You can cut small pieces of wood on it too. When you are finished sawing, be sure to make a final horizontal cut as low down on the stump as possible. For some deciduous trees like hazel, willow and chestnut, there may be a chance of new tree growth from the stump in a few years time. If you don't have a need to cut a tree down, but you are still in need of a vise to keep wood still when sawing, you can use a stick with a Y branch on it and place another stick leaning against this Y branch to form a frame to rest your log on. This form of saw vise works best with long logs, as the log you are cutting actually acts as another leg for the saw vise, almost like a tripod, and it makes it much sturdier. This type of saw vise is great, as you can adjust the height to whatever is comfortable for your needs. Whether you are a small or a tall person, the height of the vise can be adjusted to fit. You can even cut short lengths of log on it. But the best part is that when you are done, you can simply separate the logs from each other and they become portable. You can take them back to base camp or move on to another spot. When cutting longer, heavier logs, the wood will often split at the end of the cut as the weight of the log puts too much downward pressure on the cut as the material removed gets thinner. Normally, when cutting firewood, this wouldn't matter, but if you are using the logs for making a timber frame for a shelter, or even if you are doing DIY at home and you are using pre-cut lumber, this tip will still help. As you saw through the log, when you get about three quarters of the way through, take your saw blade out and make another cut on the underside of the log. You might need to push and pull the saw a number of times to make the undercut. Once you've done this, go back to cutting the wood as normal, but towards the end of the cut as you feel it about to split, increase the speed of your cutting motion and the log should cut cleanly with no split. It's not something that you would need to do often when in the woods, but when using pre-cut lumber or when you want a cut to look tidy, this is a great tip for making a clean cut without the wood splitting off. When making a fire from a bow drill, you need to burn in the hole with the spindle to begin with, and then you need to create a notch for the wood dust to gather and for your ember to be seated. You can use a knife to make this notch, but this can be time consuming. If you have a small folding saw, you can make two cuts at angles towards the burnt in hole, and then remove the material to make your V notch. It's much quicker and easier making the notches this way, as generally folding saws are cross cut saws, and therefore they are designed to cut across the grain of the wood, which makes it fast to remove the material to create the V-notch on a bow drill. You can use just about anything to support wood when making a cut. If a branch is slightly off the floor, you can place your log or stick over this and saw away. More often than not, for any small diameter wood that I am cutting in the forest, I will just rest the stick or log across my foot and use this as a support. I can raise or lower my foot to open the cut and reduce the friction on the blade to stop it pinching. It's simple, and unlike all the other vices and supports, I don't have to make the support from the forest, it's already there with me. And that's it. Like Tolkien's Return of the King, 
the trilogy is complete. 10 axe, 10 knife, and 10 sword skills in 10 minutes. Well, technically if you add them together, that would be 30 minutes. But either way, there are 30 tips on the holy trinity of bushcraft tools. I hope you enjoyed the series, and if you are interested in watching more bushcraft and survival skills and tips like these, then please follow the link to the playlist I have made in the video description below. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe for more like it. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.